Oh my golly. Yeah.
Good morning, champions, and welcome to our online celebration. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. I just want right now for you to send up some heart emojis and already tell us where you're watching from. Remember, no matter how you celebrate Valentine's Day, Jesus is the greatest lover of our soul, and he'll never, never let us down. Amen. So send up some heart emojis right now. You can share, set up a watch party, and, and invite friends to watch alongside with you. I just want to encourage you all that even in the midst of the staying home, we want to continue to be in your life group. Okay, um, join a life group at any time. Go online. We can get, you can go online and set up, uh, join a life group. We always want you to be in, it connected. Be connected online. Watching the celebration is not just enough. It will not allow you to grow spiritually. So if you join a life group, you'll be able to grow in your spiritual walk and be taken care of. So if you are not in a life group, please go online and, and or type in the comment right now and we'll connect, get you connected. For our champion kids, we have Sunday school classes ages 5 to 12. And you are invited, whether you are with our Champion Life Center family, physically or online, just go into our online and register your children. If we have a Zoom class every Sunday for all the children, and it's so much fun for them to be connected and share what God has taught them throughout the week. And also, we just want you to continue to have your youth. Every Friday night, they're connected on Zoom every Friday night at 7.30. Connect with them on all of their social media pages for all of the updates. So all the young people, get them involved. This is a time before it was harder for you to have your youth connected. And so now we are setting up all the platforms just to help you. So get your youth involved. And we are so excited for you to be a part of our live talk show on Saturdays. Two hearts, one love. We watch the three-part series as two couples share principles of uh, to engage your enhance your relationship. You can listen and ask questions in real time. Yesterday was so sizzling as they talked about building strong relationships. This episode coming in this week will be talking about true love talks. They will be discussing enhancing communication in marriage. And so you just be right here on this channel on Saturday, February 20th at 12 noon. For more information or if you miss yesterday's episode, visit our website or our CLC app or just simply chat below. Please mark your calendars, guys for February 28th at 12.30 p.m. After the celebration, we will be having SOCAM. This is our State of the Church Annual Meeting. If you're a member of the CLC family, you are requested to attend our virtual meeting. Others are welcome to observe, but if you are a part of our CLC family, please, we're asking you to join us and be a part. Watch for more details to come when it gets closer. And in this time, we all need prayer. This is a time when sometimes people feel alone or they just need someone to talk to. You can go online and click, I need prayer, and someone will call you. Or you can call our prayer line at one 844 728 9526 and someone will reach out to you and lastly we just ask you to follow us and all of our social media pages this is the fastest way that you can get all the updates on what's happening in our CLC community so stay connected with us, like our page, share our page, and turn on the notifications so that you will know exactly the time when everything is going on. And so now it's offering time. 
I get excited when it's offering time because it, when I give, not re, I'm not expecting anything, but it's just the love that I want to show God that I give back to him what he has blessed me with. And so now I just want to thank everyone. As you prepare your hearts to give, I want to thank you for partnering with us, for helping our ministry. Because of your generosity, this ministry is able to be international, that it's able to touch the world and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as you prepare, I just want to thank you for all. If you want to partner with us, these are the ways that you can partner with us. You can text to give, you can e-transfer your giving, you could give through our website, or you can give through our mobile app. Just visit our website at www.championlife.ca for more instructions. And please let us know which center that you're giving to. You can set up a one-time giving or you can set up automated giving. So we just open up the platform that even though you are online, you can still be a part of this ministry that because you give, your arm is stretched out to the world. So let us pray. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity that we can give. We thank you, dear Lord God, for your love. We thank you, dear Lord God, for your provision. We thank you for even our protection, dear Lord Jesus. Because truly you are the one that protects us as we go out. You are the one that wakes us up in the morning. You are the one that gives us the ability to gain wealth. And so, Father God, as we give back what is due unto you, we're asking you to bless it, dear Lord God. Multiply it, dear Lord God. That is able to touch, dear Lord God, every corner of this world, dear Lord Jesus, for you. And so, Father, I ask you to bless each and every one that give. Bless the ones that don't have to give, dear Lord Jesus. And so, Father God, I just thank you, Lord God, for the open doors of opportunity that through our obedience, dear Lord God, that you open up the floodgates of heaven. So, Father, bless our tithes and our offering, dear Lord God, and we give all the glory to you in Jesus' name. So we thank you so much for supporting our ministry and partnering with us. So now I would ask you to stand up and let's worship the name of Jesus together. Happy Valentine's Day, champions. We welcome you to our celebration. We're so excited to worship with you today. Turn to your neighbor, say, I love you. Turn to your other neighbor, say, I love you. Put it in the chat. I love you, family. And more importantly, let's say to the Lord, Lord, we love you. Lord, we, we know that there is no love like your love. And there is no love that can substitute your love, God, that your love is greater than all things. So I want to invite you champions to sing with us to a God who cares, a God who loves you so deeply. You know, the Bible says that he gave his son for us. He loved us so much that he gave, it, he gave his life for us. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for your love. And today, God, we just love back on you. We take this moment to sing about your love for us, to, to appreciate you. Lord Jesus, we take this moment to sing our praises to you. We bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well, the never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy, taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. for God
sing, bring all your failures. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. is waiting oh. God you love the world we thank you for your love Father we thank you that there's no one who loves like you so today God we take this moment to just set aside time to sit at your feet Lord let us not miss who you are in our lives let us not miss God how sweet you've been to us let us not miss that you're the lover of my soul. God, I love you. I thank you for you, who you are in my life, in our lives. And Father, today we offer a song to you. Wherever you are, just take this moment to appreciate the Lord. Take this moment to just say what's on your heart to the Lord. Father, I'm thankful for you. We're thankful for your son. We thank you that you're faithful, that you continue to show up to us, God. We offer this song to you, Lord. We offer our hearts to you, Lord. We offer everything we are to you, God. Stirring me a love that's deep, a love that's wide, a love that's deep, and help me, Lord, to never keep it to myself. And if my heart should dimly burn, and if my feet should fail to run, call my name and I will come right back to you. There's no
that's why the Lord is sweet and help me Lord to never keep me to myself and if my heart should dimly burn and if my feet should fail to run call my name and I will come right back to It's really that simple. I want to stay close to you, as simple as this song. I want to stay close to you. It's really that simple. I want to stay close to you my whole life. Let's sing that again. I want to stay close to you. It's really that simple. I want to stay close to you, as simple as this song. I want to stay close to you. It's really that simple. I want to stay close to you my whole life long. Stay close to you. I want to stay close to you all my life. I want to stay close. When the music fades and all these drift away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. 
I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking to my eyes I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus world no one could express how much you deserve though I'm weak for all I have is yours every single breath come on I'll bring you more than a song for a song he himself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things are. See that again. Oh, I'm coming back to all of the worship. It is all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, things I made. And it's all about you. It's all about you. Father, it's all about you. Lord, we love on you today. We come back with our love song to you, God, as you poured your love on us. 
Lord, as you've been faithful to us, as you've given us all that we need, God, we sing our song back to you. Lord, and we're sorry for what we've made it. It's all about you, Father. And today we just rededicate our devotion to you, God. Lord, we just love on you. We accept your love. Even right now, God, as you you pour your love on your people, you pour your love on the brokenhearted, you pour your love on the weary. We're just so thankful for who you are. God, it's all about you. We give you all the glory and honor and praise, God, and today, may we just have open ears and open hearts to receive what you have for us. We bless you, Father, and we're ready to hear from you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just continue to be in that atmosphere of worshiping the Lord. And just go ahead from wherever you are right now in your living room, in whatever room you are in, just just enjoy the presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, worship team, for that wonderful um, worship that we have. Yes, it's all about worship. Um, And so today, um, wherever you're watching from, I just encourage you, uh, let us know where you are if you're If you're watching for the very first time, um, let us know where you're watching from, okay? And, um, or we want to acknowledge you, so uh, please fill up a connect card so we'll get to know you a little bit more. So it's not just, uh, you're not just an audience, you're not just uh, a viewer. Uh, We want you to be a part of the family. And so uh, let us know and uh, just connect with us, okay? Uh, By the way, you can share this live stream uh, right now on your Facebook page and start a watch party so you could watch this with your friends. Uh, if you are being blessed by the messages that you hear from Champion Life, please make sure that you like this platform wherever you're watching this, whether it's on uh, Facebook or on YouTube. So, it, you know, make sure you like it so that you will be able to uh, see all the posts that as they come in. Uh, So now let's go before the Lord and uh, just ask God to speak to us as we hear the message today. So let's, uh, let's go before the Lord. Let's open our hearts and minds to God. Lord, we come to you today and we pray that you would speak into our lives. We open our heart and mind to you and we pray, God, have your word uh, to come forth and let it be rooted in our hearts that we can apply it in our daily life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, we are continuing on a series of messages on Solomon's wisdom for long life and prosperity. So if you just joined us in this series, uh, there are several other messages that uh, have gone before this. We are now on the seventh message. So I would like to talk to you about overcome fear. All right, that's the topic today, overcome fear. Now, there were two explorers uh, that were on a jungle safari when all of a sudden there was a ferocious lion that jumped in front of them. And and so one of the explorers, he whispered uh, and said, um, be calm. He said, remember what we have read in those book of wild animals? He said, if we will keep still and look at the lion in the eye, he will turn and run. And so the other explorer said, yeah, sure. You've read the book. I've read the book. But the lion read the book. (laughs) Well, (laughs) friends, now that's the problem. So let's read the book on how we can overcome fear. All right, so I want you to turn on or open your Bibles to our text today in our scripture is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24 to 26. Okay, it says this. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. 
have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Praise God for his word. Now, King Solomon says, have no fear of sudden disaster or the ruin that overtakes the wicked. In other words, don't be afraid of the circumstances. Each one of us will go through tragedies and trials and situations that will shake us and cause us to fear. Whether you believe in Christ or not, you will go through problems. But the Bible says we should not fear these things if you have the Lord Jesus Christ with you. Do not be afraid of what the disaster may come or the destruction that will uh, definitely go to those that are wicked. The Bible says that the Lord will be your confidence. This means that when fear comes, you can put your faith in Christ and He will deliver you. In the Gospel of Mark, we can see what happened to the disciples. It says here in the Gospel of Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Now, Jesus and his men or the disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee after a long day of reaching or teaching the multitudes. Jesus, weary from his work, is asleep in the back of the boat. And as the disciples row, uh, row they find themselves suddenly in the middle of a storm. Now, if you know the Sea of Galilee, uh, which sits, uh, it sits surrounded by mountains and is subject to sudden and violent storms as the hot air uh, rushes from the desert and then the, meets the cold air from uh, the surface of the lake. And so the disciples <clears throat> and Jesus find themselves caught in a rage of a terrible storm. The waves are so violent that they have filled the boat with, with water, and there's a danger that the boat will be swamped and sink. So the disciples were fearful for their lives, and they call out to Jesus, who is asleep. And so Jesus arises and calms the storm by saying, quiet, be still. Then he turns to his men and rebukes their lack of faith. You know, that's interesting what he he told them about their lack of faith because um, they have been with Jesus and they have seen him do a lot of miracles and all of a sudden they even say things like, don't you even care? You know, sometimes we think that when we're going through troubles, when we're going through storms, we think we're in it alone and we think that Jesus doesn't even care. But here we see that Jesus did care, but he knew that he was in the boat and that he, just with him, that people should not be terrified. So he questioned why they were afraid. And that word afraid in verse 40, that means afraid to the point of giving up. So it's not just a fear, you know, like just to know uh, something, to be fearful about something. It was actually the kind of fear that was to give up. So if only the disciples knew who Jesus really was, they probably would not have been afraid of the storm. Now, in the same way, friends, we also have our storms, the trials and tragedies that we face. And maybe you're even going through one right now. Sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of a storm. 
One day you are all okay and enjoying life. You are pursuing your dreams and goals. The next day you're in a big trouble. There was nothing you could have done to avoid it. It was all of a sudden there. And maybe that's happening to some of you today. These are the sudden disasters. Maybe a loss of job all of a sudden. And a life-threatening sickness that all of a sudden come to us or a loved one. And maybe a financial disaster. And these circumstances or crisis presses on us. And the first reaction that we will have is to be afraid, especially when we don't see our way out. Some of these fears are the fear of the unknown. You know, just not knowing what is ahead can cause anxiety and bring fear into our hearts. The fear of lack, when you feel that you will not have enough to survive. The fear of what others might do to you. You know, fear of uh, even the coronavirus. And now we even have the fear of the vaccine. <laughs> you know, and there's a fear of death. One of the most gripping fears is the fear of death. And the disciples were afraid for their lives. Like these disciples, we often look at our storm and we tremble with fear. However, when, when we do what they did and involve the Lord in our storm, we find out that He is in control. Then we are left with, uh, with one conclusion. You know, how uh, that, that God is greater, that G Jesus is far greater than the storm we will ever face in life. So instead of being discouraged at the point of giving up, we can put our confidence and trust in the Lord. Sometimes the Lord comes the storm, but sometimes He lets the storms rage and comes His child. Either way, He is in control. So how can we overcome fears? So here's some principles that we can apply in our life that can help us to overcome fears. The first one is this. Face your fear. You cannot overcome your fear if you don't acknowledge it. You know, during the World War II, a military governor met with General George Patton in Sicily. When he praised Patton highly for his courage and bravery, the general replied, Sir, I am not a brave man. The truth is, I am an utter craven coward. I have never been within the sound of gunshot or in sight of battle in my whole life that I wasn't so scared that I had sweat in the palms of my hand. Years later, when Patton's autobiography was published, it contained the significant statement by the general. He said, I learned very early in my life never to take counsel of my fears. See, General Patton, considered to be one of the greatest generals during World War II, admitted that he was afraid. But he learned not to listen to his fears. So friends, first we need to acknowledge we are afraid. Face our fears. Running away from our fears doesn't help us. It gives us a false sense of pride and self-sufficiency, thinking we are okay and we don't need anyone. Or sometimes we just uh, ignore it and neglect it. It doesn't go away. It's still there. We must deal with it. To be afraid does not make you a less of a person. It makes you human. Great men and women in the Bible were also afraid at times. Joshua was afraid. Gideon was afraid. What made them great was because they overcame their fears. The disciples were afraid, and they let Jesus know it. You know, friends, I recognize that they lacked faith. In fact, Jesus said so. They should have remembered that He is in control, and nothing will happen to them. But on the other hand, they dealt with their fear. Instead of just rowing and rowing the boat and drowning, they woke Jesus up. Their fear caused them to turn to the Lord. They knew that He is the answer to their fears. 
Friends, if you are facing a fear right now, just remember that the Lord is with you. You can turn to Him as you face your fear, turn to Him because He will deliver you from your fear. In Psalm 118, verse 6 to 7, the psalmist said, The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. Friends, the psalmist recognized that with God, I can face my fear. But it's a conscious decision to say, I will not fear. I'm going to face it. I'm going to overcome because I know God is with me. And I will overcome it. So even though, uh, you know, I may have enemies who are coming against me, I will still triumph because the Lord is with me. Now, I may be speaking to somebody right now. You, you may be going through something. Uh, you, you're going through a difficulty and your tendency is to just ignore it or set it aside. And maybe there's some people that don't like you or you have enemies coming against you and you feel like just running away from it all. But I want you to know today, you can face your fear because the Lord is with you and you will overcome. He is your helper. You can say that. He is my helper, right? And so Psalm 23, verse 4, you know what David said? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, friend, David, when faced with difficulties, even life-threatening, you know, uh, situation, he said, even though I walk through that valley, still I know that I will not fear. It's a conscious decision that I have to make. I will face it. I will still walk through that valley. It's not going to, I'm going to run away from it. I'm still going to walk through that valley. But I know that as I walk through this valley, the Lord is with me and I will be able to overcome. See, even in the most difficult situation and life-threatening circumstances, you can still walk through it and face it. Don't run away from your fear. You cannot overcome something you do not face. Face your fear, and you will overcome it. Another principle that we can apply in our life to overcome is recognize the spirit within you. See, when we surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ and were born again in the Spirit, we have received the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to live victoriously to overcome all our fears. Now, here's what Paul said to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. See, friend, God did not give us the spirit of fear. You need to recognize that you have the spirit of power, and of love, and a sound mind or discipline. Nothing can knock you out. You know, we read in Proverbs 3, 26, that he will keep your foot from being snared or trapped. I mean, He's going to keep you. You have the power to do anything through Christ who strengthens you. And let me just encourage you today. The Holy Spirit is with you. He empowers you. He, he has the power for you to deliver, to deliver you from those fears in your life. He gave you the spirit of love so you can overcome your fear. You know, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, it says this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. You know, friend, the more we love God, the less fear we will have. It's a matter of trust. When we realize that God will take care of us, it relieves our fear. Just remember that, you know, you may have right now uh, 
a lover, right? Um, you know, your spouse or your, your, um, your significant other person in your life, right? Uh, people today are celebrating Hearts Day, love and everything. But I want you to know that you have the lover of your soul and that's Jesus Christ himself. And he loves you. And the more you understand how much you, he loves you and you love him, that fear goes away. You know, those of you who have children would understand this. Your children don't have to worry about something to eat. You know, they know that when they're hungry, they'll get food. You know, I remember when my children were growing up. They don't worry about a thing. They'll come, they'll just keep opening the fridge. You know, our fridge handle broke because they just keep, you know, after a few minutes, they look again as if something changed, you know. <laughs> but, but you see, they're not fearful if they're going to get fed. They knew that there is going to be food that mom and dad will provide for them. See, they trust you. Now, if you didn't provide for them, of course, they would get worried and it could lead to tremendous trauma and upset and fear in their lives. But they know that you love them so much and will provide for them so they aren't afraid. Right? I mean, you have to go through everything. You do everything. You work. You do everything just so that you can provide for them because that's how much you love them. And because of that love, it removes that fear. So, friends, it's the same way. The God loves us so much. And when we understand that love and we love Him through the Holy Spirit, who is love, the, the Spirit of love, then that fear will be cast out. So the Spirit of love is in you. Recognize that. The Holy Spirit will enable you to overcome fear. Amen? You know, just go ahead and declare that. You know, uh, the, the spirit of love is in me, right? The spirit of love is in me. Or you can put perfect love, cast out fear, right? So just declare that in your life. You need to keep declaring it and understanding. You recognize that the Holy Spirit is inside of you. You're a child uh, of God. You're a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the Holy Spirit in you. And he doesn't have love. He is love, <laughs> You know, he's the spirit of love, and he's in, in you, and because of that, he will drive out the fear in your life. The third principle is this. Know that the Lord is with you. Know that the Lord is with you. Now, finally, if, if we are to overcome our fears, we need to know the Lord. Without him, we are drawing on our own strength and abilities. That's why I said a while ago, that, you know, when you receive Jesus Christ, that's when the Spirit of, uh, of God comes inside of us. So we need to receive Christ first. We need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Without Him, we'll just be relying on our own strength and abilities. There are many times when we will be in a situation where we have no control. Therefore, your, your strength and abilities uh, and influence, they mean nothing. Have you ever been there you know, maybe I'm, I'm speaking to someone here today that maybe you're, you're in this situation. You don't know where to turn. You know, that none, of your, none of your connections, your influence, your abilities, your strength, none of it is working. You know, friend, when you run out of option and you don't know what to do, of course you become fearful. But in those moments, we recognize that we need the Lord in our life. God is our source of strength. He is our hope. He is our helper. Yes, go ahead. Declare that. He is my helper. He is my hope. I want to encourage you today. You know, no matter how difficult it is, no matter what you are fearful today, I want to encourage you that He is your helper. Sometimes you don't see it. Sometimes you think, you know, just like the disciples, don't you even care? You know, sometimes we think those. But friend... You need to remember that God loves you. He does care. He is your hope. He is your helper. And you need to keep convincing yourself that that is so. Even though you don't see it, even though you, you look at the situation that make you fearful, you need to remember that Jesus is your helper. He is your hope. Let me encourage you with this verse in Isaiah. Here's what 
Isaiah, uh, prophet Isaiah said in chapter 41, verse 10 to 14, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid, O warm of Jacob, O little Israel, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Amazing. I mean, if you need to keep reading that over and over until it sinks inside of you, I mean, just go and do it. Why? Because you need to recognize that the Lord is with you. You know how powerful that statement is when, when God says, I want you to know I myself will help you. I'm not sending someone. I am myself, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that parted the Red Sea. The miracle-working God is the one myself will help you. I mean, that is amazing. I mean, the Almighty, that nothing is impossible with Him, and He's saying, I myself will help you. So we need to understand He's with you. He's with us. You know, through the prophet Isaiah, God reminded and encouraged his people not to fear because he is with them. Now, if you remember, Israel had so many enemies, and sometimes they're surrounded, they're outnumbered, but they always won. Why? Because the God of, of Israel is with them. Amen. Same with us. I don't know what may be troubling you right now. But let this word encourage you today that the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed and almighty God, is with you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Nobody can against you. I don't care how many enemies you have. I mean, God is there to help you. In fact, you know, we find in the scripture sometimes when the enemies were so many and were outnumbered, God made them fight each other. And then so Israel had no one to fight. I mean, that's amazing what God can do. So when you call upon Jesus, He's there to help you. He is your ever-present help in time of need. You know, there was a five-year-old boy, Johnny, was in the kitchen as his mother was uh, making supper. And she asked him to go into the pantry and get her a can of tomato soup. But he didn't want to go in alone. You know, he says, it's dark in there. I'm scared. And she asked again, and he still persisted. And so finally, mother said, well, it's okay. Jesus is going to be there with you. And so Johnny, he, he, he hesitantly goes there, and he opens the door, and, um, you know, he sees it's so dark. And so he's still scared, so he turns around, and just as he was leaving, he got an idea. So he went back, and he peeks inside, and he says, Jesus, if you're there, can you hand me the tomato soup? <laughs> I don't know if Jesus will hand you a can of tomato soup, but when the disciples were afraid, and they had tried rowing and worrying and crying, but nothing they did had any effect until they called on Jesus. When they did, Jesus rebuked the wind and calmed the storm. Friend, you can run around and do everything yourself without God and still be troubled. But when you know the Lord Jesus and trust in Him, you can overcome. You must remember today, as your boat is battered and threatened by the storm that howls around you, you serve a God who is able to speak peace to your storm too. The hour will come when He will rebuke your storm and it will go away. Maybe you just need to do what they did. Stop trying and give it to Him. The Lord is in full control. He can bring peace in the storm. 
One moment there is a storm, <laughs> the next second everything is calm and peaceful. In the same way, Jesus can give you peace to overcome your fear. John four, chapter 14 verse 27 says this. Jesus said, peace I leave you, with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Friend, this is Jesus speaking, telling you, do not be afraid. That's Jesus. Jesus said this is not the kind of peace that the world gives. There may be peace around you, but still you have no peace in your heart and you are fearful. Only through Jesus Christ can you have true peace to overcome your fear. He is the Prince of Peace, and in Him you have peace in your soul. And that's why Solomon says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. See, would you like to have a sweet sleep? <laughs> Amen. Well, give your life to Jesus and know Him. Recognize that He is with you even in your storm. Friends, as we have seen in the Word of God today, we can overcome fear. We can put our confidence in the Lord, whether it be disease, discouragement, difficulty, or death. It will seem nothing when it's compared to Him. Those who have a big God can overcome their fears. So go ahead and face your fears. Recognize the spirit within you. You don't have the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Lastly, know that the Lord is with you, and he will give you peace in the midst of your storm. You receive that today? Amen? Well, praise the Lord. Let's us pray. And friend, this may be an opportunity for you to receive Christ in your life. Now, I've been talking about, you know, overcoming fear and having peace, and I've just said, you know, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you, if you have never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, this is the moment. This is the opportunity. Maybe you have been trying to run away from the Lord. You've been trying to do your own thing. Or maybe you were even, you know, uh, you, you're watching this live stream. Maybe somebody shared it with you. You have been walking with the Lord, but somehow, somewhere, you started doing things on your own. And now things are not that, you know, uh, not that good as you think it is. And now you're faced with circumstances. And now you're hearing this message that you need to give your life back to the Lord. You know, the Lord loves you so much. He is the lover of your soul. The best thing you can go today, do, to do today is to love him with all of your heart, to give your life to him. So I want to pray for you. I want to give you an opportunity right now. Now, you may have been religious, but you know what? Religion will never uh, save us. It's not about religion. It's about relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants to begin a relationship with you. So I want you to pray with me the simple prayer. So wherever you are, in, in your room, or uh, maybe you're by yourself and just watching this, I want you to just pray this simple prayer. It's a, a, a prayer of surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. So will you join me right now? Uh, let's uh, do this prayer right now. Just repeat after me this prayer and mean it from your heart. Just say this. Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe you rose from the dead that I may have life. Now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me of all my unrighteousness. And I will follow you all the days of my life. Now, I pray this in your name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know that you are now a child of God, so congratulations. Please let us know that you have made that prayer, and we will send you a little gift, all right? Uh, 
to, to know how to start that relationship with the Lord. We have a booklet. We want to give you and a New Testament Bible, and we want to just hand it over to you, mail it out to you. Let us know about that. Just put it on the chat or fill it up in a connect card and say, I just received Jesus or I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ. All right, so I want, you to, I want to encourage you to do that. Now, if you would like to have a deeper relationship with Christ and would like to know how you can walk uh, also in, in, in this overcoming uh, your fear, if you would like to know how to do that, also let us know. Have a ch- uh, put it in the chat and we will connect with you. Our, our uh, uh, host, our team is standing by to connect with you. All right? So, and if you don't belong to a life group, make sure you belong to one right now. I encourage you to get into one so you will grow in your spiritual journey this year, especially, you know, when there's so many things that can make us fearful, it's good to have people around us that can encourage us in our faith with God. All right, so we're going to end it today, so I'd like you to stand from wherever you are, and we just uh, receive the blessing of the Lord, and just stretch your hands to heaven and receive the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you, and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. May he cause you to walk under an open heaven. May he cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May he open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May he continue to fill you with his love, grace, and the power of his spirit throughout this week and until he comes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great week.